Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is the third video in my series of electronics tutorials. Today we're going to talk about the Pickaxe microcontroller, which I use in quite a lot of projects. It's what I used in my Iron Man um, motorised faceplate. You can see the video and some more information on that in my channel and on my website. And it's also what I used in my Android projects, which is this robot that walks along on two legs. So you can also see that in my YouTube channel and on my website. So pickaxe microcontrollers are used um, in schools. They're sold by a company called Revolution Education. They're designed to be incredibly simple. They're used um, for teaching electronics in schools and they're resellers worldwide. There's lots of information for that reason on the website, which is pickaxe.com. And if you look in the manual section on the menu along the top, you find there's some PDF documents of basic commands and wiring diagrams and lots of information on the chips and the boards which are available. There's also lots of accessories. So in this tutorial I'm really only going to touch the surface of what we can do. Um, the parts along here are um, the Pickaxe 08M development kit which is um, has this board with some places to solder components. And it's basically a kit that comes with all the parts you can put together so that's what I'm going to use in this video. The two boards along the bottom are the um, 18 Pickaxe 18 development board, which also has a driver on to drive higher current devices. And the one on the left is the 40 development board. So they come in different shapes and sizes, pretty much um, suitable for any project that you want to do. So I'm going to get on and put this 08M kit together, and then we'll do some simple things. So I'm going to make a light flash. Um, there's some code that's going to be on my website, so if you look at xrobots.co.uk slash electronics you can find the written version of this with words and pictures and also the code to do various things. Although there's a lot more code examples at the pickaxe.com website. So I've got my board built together, um, here it is, it actually comes with a page of instructions that tells you where to put all the components and even what the colour codes are on the resistors because there's two different values and where to put them and basically how to use it. So there's the board, it's got 5 volts wired to it despite coming with one of these 9 volt battery clips it's actually for 5 volts only so I've got 5 volts on there that's quite important. So um, the other thing I've got is the download cable which is this cable, which is one of these stereo jacks that plugs into the socket there and that's linked with USB to a computer basically. The software for this is free and I'm going to show you a piece of code that I've written. Okay, so here's the code. Basically it's telling the pickaxe to turn on one of its outputs on pin 1, pause for 500, which is 500 milliseconds, so that's half a second, then turn it off again, pause again, and then basically go back to main and main is a label at the beginning so that basically sends it around in a loop. So on the board I've soldered a resistor and an LED on the development area. So you can look at my previous video for working out LED resistor values. So what should happen now, that's why to pin 1 on the output you can just see the left hand side of the resistor goes to the 1. It's a set of numbers along the top there for the different outputs. So if I go and program this now, you should find it makes the LED flash. And there we go. Seems to be working. So as I said before, this is only just touching the surface of what you can do with a pickaxe microcontroller. There are pages and pages of commands. So go and have a look at pickaxe.com and have a look at the manuals. There's also lots of wiring diagrams for different things. The other thing I need to mention, of course, is that the program is now downloaded into the microcontroller. So even though it's not connected to the computer anymore, it's just connected to power. Obviously the program is still running and the uh, LED is still flashing away. And also, so if we disconnect the uh, power, obviously it stops. 
Um, the program stays in there though even if you do disconnect the power, so if we reconnect it again, it just carries on doing whatever you programmed it to do. So as you can see I have a normal radio control style servo, and that's just linked to uh, one of the outputs of the pickaxe, and um, basically I've got code that's just telling it to move to different positions with timings in between. So let's have a look at the code for that one. So here's the code for making the servo move in the fashion that I just showed you. Basically it initialises the servo with a servo command, so it's pin 2 and it takes it to a position of 75. And then it uses the servo pause command to modify that position, going through 75, 150 and 225, which are just basically positions. You can have between 0 and 255 as a position. So um, obviously there's pauses in between, so the servo moves twice in one direction and back to the beginning and then everything goes back in a big loop and that's it. So as I say the, the code is taken directly from the Pickaxe website so you can have a look at the documentation. There's a wiring diagram for wiring a servo amongst other output devices and the code for all of those things as well. So with the Iron Man helmet I also had a button that I pushed obviously to activate the faceplate so you can have input devices with this as well so you can have a button connected the best place to have a look for how to do this is at pickaxe.com. So here's my Iron Man helmet again. And I'm going to show you how I did that, which was slightly differently to driving the, the uh, servo directly from the pickaxe. So what I've got in this case is this uh, mini servo controller, which is a Palulu Mini Maestro. That's actually got the servos attached to it, and then the pickaxe is just sending data to it, and I talk quite a lot about this in the video, um, which is actually about the helmet faceplate. So pickaxe chips, I've got um, the 18 development board here. Pickaxe chips can natively send and receive RS-232, which is helpfully what uh, this servo controller needs. The advantage is this is actually a six channel servo controller but they do up to 18 so if you wanted to control multiple servos and have them all hold their positions at once it's much better to off board that to a servo controller and there are multiple different ones you could buy and then basically just send the data to it from your pickaxe so that um, it doesn't have to deal with all of those servos at once so obviously the servo controller could be up to 18 pins, the pickaxe probably doesn't have that many outputs. I've also got the switch attached um, with some logic built in so that uh, depending on which way you press a switch it activates the servos in different positions and all of that code is programmed into the pickaxe. So here's my Android project again. This project has one pickaxe 18 board which is on its back there. And then it actually has two servo controllers due to the large amount of servos that are needed. It's also got gyros on that use up a servo channel for setting sensitivity. So I've got two polio mini maestros, one on each side. Um, I think those are 12 channels each. That one's fully populated. And the other one has one servo attached to it so far. Bearing in mind the thing doesn't have any arms yet. So... Uh, Basically it's much easier to have one pickaxe just sending data to them and then have the servo controllers taking care of moving all the servos. So have a look at pickaxe.com and also at xrobots.co.uk slash electronics. And that's all I have for now.